Hello anime fans, I'm Kyle Glockner and welcome back to a brand new semester of Animate. A lot has happened since the semester ended and 2018 is looking like an incredibly promising year for anime. We're getting a ton of amazing sequels, original shows, adaptations, and so much more. Now, I was going to do my top 5 upcoming shows for the 2018 winter season, but as I started watching everything, there was one show in particular that really stuck with me. Ever since I saw the first episode, I've been thinking about this show non-stop, and once the second episode aired, I was hooked. So today, I'll be talking about Studio Trigger's original anime, Darling in the Franks. Darling in the Franks is set in a post-apocalyptic future and focuses on a group of children known as Parasites who are trained to pilot giant mechs known as Franks. The story mainly focuses on Hero, a pilot who was initially seen as a prodigy, but after failing a test to pilot a Franks, became unable to pilot due to emotional stress. While skipping his graduation ceremony, he meets Zero Two, a strange woman with horns on her head who is also known as the Partner Killer. So at first, this show gave me a lot of Gurren Lagann vibes. If we go through our typical mech anime checklist, we have a post-apocalyptic world, kids who probably have no business piloting giant robots piloting giant robots, and strange monsters that somehow end up looking a lot like dinosaurs. But as I kept watching through the first couple episodes, I realized this anime has so much more to offer than your standard mech show. For starters, the series has set itself up to take some dark turns. While the children do have actual names, they're generally referred to by a numeric code with some quick dialogue revealing that there may be more to a person's code than were originally shown. Also, the character they refer to as Papa is giving me some vibes similar to Father from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. He's portrayed as something of a general father figure to all parasites, which leads me to believe there could be some dark secrets about him that could come to light before the series is over. By far what stands out to me the most are the blatant sexual metaphors present in every aspect of the show. Normally, I would just chalk this up as anime being anime, but all throughout the second episode, it became clear this wasn't just for fan service. From the way the Franks are piloted to the way to describe heroes' problems with piloting, coupled with the fact that the Franks require a male and female to pilot them, and how their own synergy directly affects how the Franks operate, and even the fact that they refer to each other as a stamen and pistol. Through all this, you start to pick up on the fact that this show may be one big metaphor for young adults experiencing physical relationships for the first time. And while it might not seem that way to a normal group of kids, there's more to this than you might think. The parasites are all confined within a military city known as the Plantation, and even there, they're restricted to only a couple small areas. They live incredibly isolated lives and don't know much outside of piloting the Franks, to the point where the characters don't even know what a kiss is except for the only outsider, Zero Two. We still don't have many details on her, but she is an outsider to the plantation and seems to know a lot more than the other children. Overall, Darling in the Franks is shaping up to be one of the best shows this season, and at 24 episodes, this series will be a fantastic part of the already phenomenal looking Spring 2018 season, which includes My Hero Academia Season 3 and the Persona 5 animation. If I had to summarize the series thus far, I'd probably call it Scum's Wish with Mechs. I really feel like this show has the potential to get really deep and dark in regard to its subject matter, but all we can do is watch and see where it takes us next. Darling in the Franks is an original anime directed by Atsushi Nishigori, written by Atsushi Nishigori and Naoto Hayashi, and animated by Studio Trigger and A1 Pictures. Even if mech anime isn't your thing, I genuinely think you should give this show a chance. I mean, I certainly can't think of any other instance where an original mech anime went downhill after the first 13 episodes. But anyway, that's all the time I have for today. But let me know what you think by tweeting me at ZTV Goofing Off using the hashtag animate. Until then, I'm Kyle Glockner, and this has been Animate. <laughs>